Bonjour. Comment les affaires? Les haricots sont salés? How's everybody doing? Welcome back to another lesson in Louisiana French. I'm Kirby Jambon, and i um, happy to be doing these lessons for you today. Uh, we are going to continue our study of Louisiana French. Uh, we're going to look at, um, each week we're looking at a few different ideas. Um, today we want to uh, focus in on um, a couple of ideas dealing with gender, with verbs, and present tense. We'll continue those discussions that we did last time. Uh, for those of you who are just joining us, um, um, this is our sixth lesson. You can go back to, uh, to the YouTube page and begin with uh, lesson one if you want to see the progression that we've done. And again, my name is Kirby Jambon. I'm a teacher by trade. Uh, I spend most of I've been teaching elementary French immersion for uh, for many many years. I've also I'm also been teaching adult classes in Louisiana or what's sometimes called Cajun French for many years as well. Um, and uh, during this time of social distancing, we decided we were gonna I decided we were gonna do this uh, these little lessons. My first time ever making videos. I'm every week. I'm hoping I'm gonna get a little better at them and. Um, Looking for some better lighting now. I think I found a different way to do some lighting. So hopefully each uh, video will get a little bit better. But please excuse my quality. I'm, you know, this is my first time doing this. Um, and so um, we're going to begin today uh, talking about the concept of gender in French. Now, when we speak about gender in in in, in French, remember, uh, French, uh, we we're talking about is not simply the same ex way it exists in English. Uh, in archaic English, um, they had. Um, a more gender, a few more gender rules than they have today, but in in the Romance languages, um, pretty much every noun has a gender. It's either masculine or feminine. Not just nouns associated with human beings, but every noun has a gender. Uh, um, there are many theories about the origin of this and how it all began, but um, uh, you know, some languages have four genders. You know, the masculine, feminine, uh, animate, and inanimate. Um, in in French, basically, we have the two genders of masculine and feminine. And when words are plural, they don't tend to follow all the same rules, but um, masculine and gender, especially in Louisiana French, but we'll talk more about that at a later time. Now, the idea is that every word, every noun, I should say, every has a gender. Um, for example, uh, for example, if I want to talk about la tête, la tête, the head, is feminine. Okay? La tête is feminine. All right? Le nez is masculine. Is masculine. Now, why la tête is feminine and le nez is masculine, I don't know. But <laughs> we're going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about how you can learn these really easily. And the way you learn them really easily is um, well, you just learn them. Sorry, there is no easy way. <laughs> there is no easy way to learn. Uh, as we go along, you're going to see there are certain uh, um, tendencies in uh, that certain words will uh, be, tend to be feminine and certain words will tend to be masculine. Uh, but there's always exceptions to those rules. I would say the easiest way to help you to learn them is to simply use the articles, the article the. The, uh, the article the in, in, um, in French can be, uh, is really it has a couple of different variations of it, but there is a masculine one and a feminine one. The masculine is le, the feminine is la. So whenever you learn a new, new vocabulary, a new noun, always put the la or the le in front of it to make sure and say it that way. So it becomes practice, you know, la tête, all right? La tête, le nez, all right? La bouche, la barbe, le bras, all right? La main, la main, le doigt, okay? So you can learn these different, these different terms this way, you know, like, so they'll help you to remember them, you know? Now, why do different parts of the body have different genders? Again, I don't know. I think it's kind of interesting, you know, no. The, you know, women are the head and men are the feet. Well, well, what I mean by that is la tête is, la tête is feminine and le pied is masculine. So, I don't know why that is, but um, there are some theories you, we can maybe discuss them at a later time. But just a little thing to help you with learning genders. Also, you're going to see if you into the packet and towards the back, I mentioned that as well. If you want to start, there's a little thing called les devoirs, which means homework. In Louisiana French, sometimes we call it le devoir, which is the same way you would say it in international French, and sometimes we simply call it le homework. And uh, it, what you can do there is go to the LSU Cajun French website, and either I'm going to give you either I give you the English form, and you would give the mask, and you would uh, you would give me the. French word, English word, French word, or I would give you a, a, one of the, a masculine word, and you would have to give me the feminine form, or the feminine form, and you would get a masculine form. Now, you, all right. Now, 
<laughs> I probably just confused you because you said every noun is either masculine or feminine. I'm sorry. That's nouns. Adjectives will often change to describe whether or not they are masculine or feminine. So, uh, for I'll give you a good example, okay? Um, for example, um, um, here you go. This is a paper, so and it's white. So I would say le papier blanc, le papier blanc. All right. Um, but I, right there is a light. You can't see it, but it's hopefully it's shining a little light. And light is feminine, la lumière. But it would be la lumière blanche, the white light. Le papier blanc, blanc and blanche. They change with with gender. So you can practice those as well. Good things to practice. So the last time we were talking about the present tense, and um, again there. Are Basically, in English as well, we use two basic present tense. The basic present tense, which is where you say, I, you know, for example, I would say, uh, you speak, tu parles. All right? You speak, tu parles. All right? Uh, or you can say, you are speaking. And in Louisiana French, we would say that as, te après parler. Te après parler. So in that, in that, um, in that, uh, phrase, it's basically a combination of three different things. Uh, basically, you're going to use a form of the verb to be, and just review a couple of forms of the verb to be real quickly. With with I, to say I am, would be je, try je. Internationally, would be je suis, and colloquially, it would be je suis, but Louisiana French, and very often in, in Canada, I've heard je, je. Then you're going to add the word après, the word après, which normally means after, but in here it simply means that you, you putting it's like putting an ing at the end of the verb, and then you're going to put the verb in its infinitive form. Now the infinitive form of the verb is the it means the verb plus the word to in front of it. So parler, p a r l e r, is to speak. So if you wanted to say I want to speak, je veux parler, you don't need to add the word to. It's in that form. Okay. Um, so it's those three things together. All right, and you, it takes a little practice to learn them, but I have them written out on page six in the packet. Again, Facebook's message me. I'll add you to the Louisiana French group if you're interested in getting the packets as well. Um, but it's spelled out in there with the different pronouns using it. Uh, it just takes some practice. Uh, there's the note it explains how to use the different forms. Um, just a point as well, um, international French uses, rather than the word après, uh, they would tend to use the word en train, where we use après. And um, we use en train as well in Louisiana French. Let me give an example of how we use it in a slightly different sense, okay? So let's try this, all right? Um, let's do, um, uh, he eats, right? Il mange, he eats. He is eating, il est après manger, il est après manger. Right. He is about to eat. Il est en train de manger. Il est en train de manger. So in Louisiana French, the en train would be more like about to do something rather than uh, is actually doing at that moment. Okay. Um, and uh, but the, typically you're going to hear the après use all the time. And again, now I, I've I heard an old like I think I've heard an old Acadian French. They also use the après. A friend of mine from New Brunswick told me that he he would say it as well. But um, but you don't find it. Um, it's not taught as a basic um, a basic way to conjugate the verb in the present progressive tense in international French. It's very Louisiana. Okay, c'est bon. All right. So we were also talking about some verbs last time. I have a page on page seven. It says bonjour au verbe encore, saying uh, saying hello to the verbs again. And um, what I want to just do to work on the pronunciation of these verbs here. We'll go with them and we'll just try pronounce, pronouncing them. Almost all of these verbs are also found in international French, so not a problem. When it is a difference, I will let you know what the difference is and how it's found. But we're going to review the whole page together just so you can have a good practice pronunciation. Let's try it. To back up, reculer. Reculer. We typically reverse the ER in Louisiana French. Rather than reculer, we say reculer. Recule. All right? To break, casser. To break, casser. To bring, omne. To bring, omne. To buy, acheter or acheter, acheter, acheter. To calculate or to figure, calculer, calculer. To celebrate, célébrer, célébrer. We also did another version of celebrate, which was fêter earlier. Mm -hmm. To chew, mâcher, mâcher. To count, compter, compter. To dance, danser, danser. To dig, fouiller, fouiller. By extension, we mentioned that in Louisiana French, 
uh, fouillé can also mean to fool around in, to mess around in, things like that. To eat, manger, manger. To embrace can mean to, to kiss or to hug, depending on how you use it. Embrasser, embrasser. And you, sometimes we'll leave off the on and just say brasser, which also means to stir, but brasser can also mean to kiss as well. To fall, tomber, tomber. To find, trouver, trouver. To fish, pêcher, pêcher. To fix, arranger. Arranger. We typically use the word arranger, which in international French is more to arrange, to mean to fix. Um, international French might use the verb, um, I think it's a repare, but we would use more of, um, of arranger. To fly or to steal, voler, voler. To forget, oublier, oublier. It may be pronounced oublier, as it is pronounced more internationally. It is, oublier is the sound. We're going to take a pause there just to make it this point. Uh, in the, one, one thing we find in certain words in Louisiana French is that the OO and the O sounds sometimes get interchanged. Um, and it goes both ways. Uh, and you'll find that in Old Acadian French as well. So typically in Louisiana French, we don't say oublier, the international word, we say oublier. For example, another word we do that with is the word for a hurricane, which, which is internationally an ouragan, which we say an ouragan. Ouragan oublié. Now, there are persons who still say oublié and ouragan. Say so just, just that I'm just speaking more of a, of a widespread use, oublié and ouragan. Um, we find it the opposite way as well. Um, a good example, for example, my mother, uh, a method of cook cooking is rotir, rotir. The word roast, in a sense, can rotir, but um, it can mean like to saute in, in a pan, rotir. Um, but my, we would typically say rotir. So instead of saying the O, we say the O in that case. So you see it works interchangeably. Okay, back to the volumes. All right, we have here, um, we have the word to give, donner, donner. To go forward, avancer. Mm -hmm. To go up or to rise, monter. Mm -hmm. To heat up, réchauffer, réchauffer. To help, aider. To hit or to tap, taper. Uh, tape is also like, for example, to clap your hands, say tape les mains. Tap your feet is tape les mains. Pied. Right. To hunt, chasser. To kill, tuer. To kiss, becke. Becke. Becke uh, comes from the word, um, um, becke comes from the word beck, which is beck means like a beak, like an animal's mouth, uh, bird's mouth and beak. And, um, and we, so it's like a little peck, uh, a little bitty, little kiss, and becke comes from there. And then tibek. Um, tea is a kiss, or um, tea bag do a sweet little kiss. Mm -hmm. um, and talk about these two words together, quitter and laisser. Both quitter and laisser can mean to leave or to let, depending on the speaker or the region. Uh, internationally, typically, quitter is more to leave, and laisser is more to let, to allow, to happen. Uh, but you'll find them both, both used in Louisiana French, sometimes interchangeably. Um, for example, you're going to say, you know, uh, you know, um, one of my favorite um, musicians of all time is the is the is uh, Clifton Chenier, uh, Clifton Chenier, uh, who's the, known as the Le Roi de Zydeco, the King of Zydeco, and he has it. And he has, and on one of his albums, he has a song out. Uh, it's written. Uh, it's written. Laissez les bons temps rouler. Let the good times roll. And uh, but when you hear him sing it, he doesn't say laissez. He's quitté les bons temps rouler, which. If you look at international, it would be leave the good times roll. But it was the way I would say it too growing up. Quitter les bons temps You know, you know laisse, laisse moi tranquille, leave me alone. Quitte moi tranquille, leave me alone as well. Okay. And so you see sometimes laisser, uh, quitter is used for laisser. But then I've also heard other ways where uh, you're supposed to say quitter. I, I heard somebody said, uh, in one of the songs I heard one time, uh, uh, he said, um, il, a, il, a laissé, il a laissé son village. Rather than just use laisser, he, we use the verb to let rather than to leave to say he left his, his, uh, the town where he was from. So it depends on, depends on the region and the speaker, but they can be used interchangeably. To borrow, emprunter. To lend, prêter. Second column, to listen, écouter. To stay or to live in, I like to live, uh, rester, all right? Uh, rester is definitely means to stay, but we use it to ask someone where they live. Uh, you to rest, okay? To look at. Regarder, try that. Regarder, regarder. We don't typically say regarder, it's regarder. And often, uh, some people won't hear the, uh, that beginning, um, and some, sometimes it's dropped. So until you'll hear it in expressions like, garde dedans, garde dedans, which means, you know, look, look there, look at that, garde dedans, you know. 
Um, sometimes it just gets garza, garza. Look at that, you know, garza. Sometimes it just gets reduced just to ga, ga. That's it. <laughs> it can get very simply just like that. Okay. To look for chasse or cherche, cherche or chasse to look for. Um, just a note, va chercher means go get. Okay. Cherche is to look for. Uh, to love or to adore, adore. Uh, to love or um, to like, aime. Uh, to lower, baisser. To marry, marier. To pass or to go to, passer. Now, passer is a word you use a lot in French, okay? And it doesn't just mean here, passe moi mon café, okay? It doesn't just mean that. Um, to, to pass something. Um, passer, for example, je vais passer chez toi demain. Um, that means I'm going to go to your house tomorrow. Je vais passer, oh, j'ai passé chez ma grand-mère hier. Um, I, I, went, I went to my grandmother's house yesterday. And that's one of the reasons, like in Louisiana, uh, like Cajun Creole English, we sometimes use pass in that sense too. Like, you know, like you might tell somebody in English, yeah, I'm going to pass by your house tomorrow. And somebody who's not from around here says, well, you can stop and come in. You know, you don't have to just keep going. <laughs> pass by means to, it comes from the French passé, which is the way you would say to, I'm going to visit. I'm going to stop by. I'm going someplace. So used in many different ways. For example, you don't spend time, you pass time. For example, all right? So, you know, on va passer un bon temps. We'll, we'll have a good time. On va passer du temps là-bas. We're going to spend some time over there. So it's used in many different ways. All right? Play, jouer, jouer, practice, pratiquer, to raise, lever. The word for a levy, which is raise the ground along the side of the river, comes from the verb lever. To ride around, rode. We talked a little bit about that one. Rode, we mean to ride around, to go here and there. Uh, international French more means like to prowl, but we just use it all the time. Hey, on va aller rode aujourd'hui. Hein? We're just going to go ride around. Okay. To show, montrer. To sing, chanter. Right? To stick or to glue, coller. We talked about that word. And also, se coller, meaning to get be close. To take care of, soigner. We did that before. Soigne toi, soignez vous. Mm -hmm. To speak, parler. To tell a story, um, you can have a couple different words. So it's like raconter or conter. Uh, typically, you might hear, um, like, I would normally hear, like, on va, on va, je vais te raconter une histoire. I'm going to tell you a story. Uh, mais je vais te conter un conte. Uh, typically, un conte, an histoire is a story, and conte is a tale, but in modern times, conte be, because tales become jokes, but maybe because of our shorter retention span. So, je vais te conter un conte, that would mean, like, I'm going to tell you a joke. So, so you might hear raconter or conter. To think is penser, but we also, but we also have a word, another word in Louisiana French, to think, which is jongler. Uh, penser, par exemple, je dis, hey, mais qui tu penses de ça? You know, what do you think about that? Quoi tu penses? What do you think? All right? You could use that word, you would use penser, the international word. But if you want somebody to think um, more, if you want them to ruminate, to reflect, you know, to have those thoughts going on and think a lot about, you, we tend to use the word jongler. There's an old Cajun chan, uh, song called Jean Gamois or Jean Gamon. And um, so, for example, if you wanted your, your sweetheart, your love, your soulmate, your significant other, who, whoever that person may be, to think of you, all right, uh, you would say Jean Gamon, not Pense à moi. Pense would just mean, like for a little thought, Jean Gamon, I mean, you're going to think about you over and over again. And you might understand why, because Jean Gamon internationally only means to juggle. It only means to juggle. Uh, for us, I guess it's juggling our thoughts. We want you to juggle, think about it. So, jongle à moi, s'il vous plaît. So, jongle à ça, that means think about that a good time, good bit, all right? Uh, to tie, amare or omare. This is one of the words that come to us from our, our, our both our nautical and Acadian origins. Um, omare or amare. Uh, omare would mean to tie up a boat, to moor a boat in international French. But we use it to tie up anything. So, tu peux amare tes souliers, huh? You can tie your shoes. You're not mooring your shoes. You're not tying your, your shoes to a wharf. You're just tying the laces together. Okay. Uh, touche, touch, I'm sorry, is touche. Yeah. Touche, like in Anga, touche, fencing, right? Touche. Uh, to travel, voyager, to walk, marcher, to watch, guette. We used we talked about that one a little bit before. Guette, meaning, if I say guette, it means to watch, but in Louisiana French, it also means to. Um, uh, it means to watch out for international French, but in Louisiana French, it also means just to watch, okay? So, um, so, um, so, vous êtes, vous êtes, uh, vous êtes en prêt, guettez, uh, moi, uh, guettez mon, uh, ma leçon aujourd'hui. You know, y'all are watching my lesson today, okay? Um, so, um, and so, like, you know, je vais guetter quelque chose sur TV. I'm going to watch something on TV, okay? Uh, to wear, porter, 
Park Tae-bin to wear or also to bring as an extension of that. Uh, Gonye to win and travailler to work. And many of us are, beaucoup de nous autres sont, <laughs> on n'est pas prêt à travailler aujourd'hui. Uh, ça fait que, so, but it's going to all be okay. All right. So I'm going to continue with another lesson uh, next time. Hopefully, go ahead, go ahead and practice some of those. Practice using the present tense with these words. Uh, for example, how would you say I, um, you know, I dance the two-step, or she plays the accordion, or we are eating gumbo, or he is riding around? How would you say those in Louisiana French? And we'll review that for next time. Okay. Merci beaucoup, les amis. Soignez-vous. Soignez les autres. Take care of each other. Take care of yourselves. Okay. Bye bye.